Here's five tricks or scams that you definitely need to know before you visit Peru. Number one is if you should be unfortunate enough to have to take a taxi from the airport, and I highly recommend that you absolutely do not, I recommend that you have either your hotel organised transport for you, which is safer, or you have some other organised transport ready for you when you arrive. First of all, because they could just take you somewhere, some local area, and stop the taxi and people will just come and rob you. Secondly, uh, the trick which I want to tell you is very, very common, is that at the airport, when you get into the taxi, and it'll be a marked taxi, there'll be numbers on the body panels and the windows, you obviously need to check that that's the case. But when you get into the taxi and you discuss price or you discuss price with the taxi driver beforehand, they will tell you a price. And that price, they will tell you it's in Peruvian currency, Nuevo Soles. And when you get to your destination, it doesn't matter how many times you've checked with them even, because I've done this once in an emergency and went through this with them at the airport because I know the scam. And when you get to your destination, guess what happens? That number suddenly turns into US dollars. And they'll say, oh no, it's a misunderstanding. And they'll sit there and they'll sit there and they'll argue and, and so on and so on. And in such a case, all you can do is really say, well, let's call the tourist police or just keep insisting. And that brings me to my next scam, which would happen in this situation, but happens anyway. Whenever you're in a taxi and you have baggage in the boot, in the trunk, never get out of the taxi before the taxi driver, because the taxi driver will drive off with your luggage. So just as in the case I highlighted where perhaps they've said the price was dollars and it wasn't, and you're going backwards and for forwards, you may think it's an ideal time to get out of the taxi and bring the situation to a conclusion. No, completely wrong. So you need to get the taxi driver out of the car first. When he gets out or she gets out, then you can get out. They know the score. They know exactly what they're doing. They're waiting for you to get out. So be very patient with that and just let them get out first and start walking around to the trunk. Then you get out and that situation is concluded without the uh, drive away baggage scam. The other scam, the third one in a taxi, in the final taxi scam, I'm going to tell you before I get to two street scams, is when you pay a taxi driver and you're behind them, which that's the safest place to be, is behind the taxi driver, not sat riding shotgun, and you pass them the money, they're going to take the coin. So let me just get a coin first. So they're going to take a coin from, from you, from behind, like something like that, but they're going to have a coin or a note down here somewhere, somewhere in their lap, something like that, or in their other hand. So what they're going to do is take that coin, oh, thank you, and they're going to just, they, they're basically just going to switch it like this. And they're going to say, oh, this is a false one. And they, they'll do the same with notes or coins, it doesn't matter, because there are, are fakes in Peru. So uh, what you need to do is when you pass them the money, you show them like this in the air. So you put your arm, then you show them, and you say, está bien? Or, or you, you just make sure that it's really seen like this, emphasised that you're showing the coin beforehand, so they know you know what you're doing. And the same with a note. You can always look at it and, and notice the last two digits of the, the bank note number. The other thing that's useful, especially uh, in, in other places besides taxis, is that when you do get notes, you can always initial them. So whenever someone tries to tell you a note is fake, could be in a shop also, uh, you can say, well, no, well, the note I've just given you has my initials on. So you've, you've switched it, it's not the note I just gave you. Um, but it's pretty easy to remember the last two digits. And also that, make sure that everything remains in sight, in line of sight. Onto the street scams. And there's two street scams I'd like to tell you about that I think are important, you know. Uh, the first one, is someone will come up to you and often they'll be very unintimidating be a, a small girl or some some young man who looks like a student perhaps and they will come up to you and show you something so i've just got, got like a map or something here so this will be like some kind of form usually a laminated sheet 
something like that. It could be a map and they're asking for directions, but usually it's like a laminated sheet or a printed sheet. And it's got something in English, but it's usually not very intelligible. And that's, that's for a reason, I'll tell you why. So they've got this thing here, and maybe they open a big map up, big old map here, and so they're stood next to you. Whilst they're doing that, and your attention is held by this confusing uh, text, which talks about perhaps some kind of charity helping children, some kind of foundation, or they're just asking where something is, uh, their hands will be slipping into your pockets or bags to steal from you. So you always need to be very careful to keep per your, your personal distance from people and just ask them to step back a little because you're not comfortable. Uh, those kind of people, obviously, you can just, just tell them to, to stay back and that you're not interested politely. And walking away and staying in a safe area is always the, the best option. The final one is fake police. And I had this situation once when I was just walking to the airport from the main road and a guy came up to me and was saying he was police, he was asking me for my documents. I just ignored him and kept on walking to the airport. Uh, you should never stop for anyone who claims to be a policeman unless that person uh, is in a group of people who are identifiable as police officers, obviously as uniform. Don't expect anyone who claims they're an undercover police agent or official of any kind uh, is, is real if they're not wearing a uniform. Um, you can always keep walking, keep moving uh, and just stay in a safe area. Don't let anyone pressure you to go down some kind of side street or get yourself hemmed in in some kind of location. So anyone asking for documents, that kind of thing, you can always say, that's fine, let's go to the local police station or let's find a uniformed policeman if you have to talk, but keep moving and they will probably realise that you don't have confidence in them and they can escalate the situation, um, which is quite difficult if you're a fake police person or if they were genuine police, what they would start to do is escalate the situation by showing ID, getting someone in uniform to come because they'd have a radio, some means of communication, obviously, to get a uniformed officer. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful for you. Please hit like if you enjoyed the video and you find it useful. It just helps me dedicate more time to provide more videos and share more knowledge with people. Um, I do appreciate it very much. I'm going to do probably one more other video on Peru, just detailing places that are lesser known and some interesting things that you can do, which are a little bit off the beaten track or lesser known. So. Uh, have a look for that, I'll put a link at the top of this video's information. Thanks for watching and enjoy your trip. Peru is a wonderful country and just avoiding these little stresses will make your, your holiday so much better. It's a fantastic country and it's just a shame that sometimes there's very few bad people that will ruin your holiday or spoil the experience. And we can all avoid that just with a little bit of knowledge.